All right. So let's see if we are live. Definitely. Okay, so let me just get to my YouTube channel so I can talk to people. Um, go to my live chat. <clears throat> okay. If we click continue here, I'll need to change some of the settings. Sorry, I just, um, this is a newer version I just downloaded, um, because I had, like, a, a trial version of the demo, so I'm just making sure everything is right. I haven't played it yet. Okay, let's see. I feel like I lowered the volume, but it didn't go down. There we go. All right. Now we'll go back, explore Titanic. I don't think it really, yeah, we'll just, there we go. So hello, Evan. Hello, Mateo. Hello, Metal Raider. All right. Hey Ella. Ella says, Hi Alex, I recently discovered your channel and subscribed after just watching a few videos. After that, I've been binging your channel. So glad to catch my first live stream. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you. Connor Moses says, Hi, how are you doing today? I am doing great. We have some really good weather today. Uh, actually, it kind of snowed this morning, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, but uh, but yeah, good good day so far. Oh, that mouse sensitivity is well that could be okay let's just go back to the options real quick that that might be a little too sluggish there we go that's better all right so we are in the first class entry on what deck is this let's click c no b deck yeah because it where I just came from would have been like the purser's office. All right. So I'm not, I don't really have a game plan of what we're going to do or what we're going to see. I'll kind of let you guys just uh, suggest things and I'll go along with it. Um, because I already did kind of a live stream where I showed mostly the, <laughs> the, all the new stuff. Cause uh, I don't know if you guys know, but, uh, but this is a, newer version of the demo this is called um um a demo 401 and uh it's actually really quite good and i think you'll see why later and i'll do my best to move fluidly and slowly through the ship so nobody gets uh too um motion sick <laughs> i know i had my dad playing this uh, a couple days ago and he got a bit motion sick actually i just saw daylight and I think this is a room I haven't been to. Oh, wow. Yep, this is a room I have not been to. Wow. You can even see the uh, the raised texture of the chair in front of me. The, um, can I crouch? Kinda. Wow. And the uh, wallpaper has kind of a reflective surface. That's pretty cool. There's a little fainting couch there. Got a 
little makeup mirror and then a vanity mirror. That's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> hello, Daniel. Hello, K4RNA. Good to see you. Yep. Uh, let's see. Today's March 24th. Did she steam down the Clyde on the 24th? Uh, the Queen Mary? I think, because I thought, uh, I thought she went into service on the 27th. She still needed to do some kind of trials before then. Yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure she went into service on, or was it May 27th she went into service? I always get March and May mixed up. Jeez. Yeah, you could be right. She she probably did steam down the Clyde today, this year. Uh, the, this, you know, th th this day back in 1936. Hello, Mike. Yeah, I'm just looking for maybe some extra rooms I didn't see before, but there's always a, a hint that there's an open door is when you see like daylight reflected on the opposite wall. Then you kind of know that one of the doors is open and daylight is kind of streaming through it, but I don't see any more daylight on this corridor, so... Yeah. I know somewhere on this corridor is, uh... is some rooms I haven't been to. I have a map, but it's just... I'd have to exit out of the game. Well, not exit out of the game, but... I kind of have to leave the game to see the map. Some people were using a zoom feature. Do I have that? Oh, wow, I do. There's a little pineapple. And then I have a zoom out feature. Oh, whoa, that's that's a little too weird. There we go. Um, oh, yeah, this this game is really cool. I like it. There we go. That's that's much better. Um, Mike says, bought a new phone. Awesome. Doc says, are there any shops in this demo? Would there have been hat shops or clothing type stores on the ship? Sorry for my ignorance. Don't know much about it. Let me give that some thought for a second because um, I, I'm not as knowledgeable about Titanic as I am about, like, the Queen Mary, for instance. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think Titanic had any retail shops. But, like, the Queen Mary did for sure, but I don't, yeah, I don't think Titanic had any retail shops. Hello, Bonnie. Metal Raider says, great graphics. Yeah, it really does. This game has some amazing graphics. It looks so real, too. It's really only when you get up close to certain objects you start to see how it's not real. But um, here's one of the fans that ventilated the place. I really like those uh, wall sconces. Mike says, just the barbershop. Yeah, that seems about it. The barbershop is probably the only thing you... But even then, it's not really retail. It's like a service. Hello, Ron. So out this way is Cafe Parisien. And this is probably one of the more beautiful spaces on the ship for sure because 
I don't know. It's just it's just got just a really nice color scheme to it, and seeing the sunlight streaming in through the windows is really cool. Although if you were out on the ocean, <laughs> you know, on your way to New York or or something, uh the whole ship would be kind of slowly rolling. And so, uh, you know, the sunlight constantly just moving back and forth would kind of be disorienting, at least to me, I think. But yeah, um, let's go see the first class boat deck area. Carl says, do you know if there was any difference in material qualities between the Titanic and the Queen Mary? I know the Mary had loads of rear wood, for example. Maybe there were there were steel quality differences, etc. Um, so there there is some um, debate about, you know, whether the steel quality on Queen Mary was better than Titanic. Um, I don't know for certain, but I... I don't really see why. I know some people would, would be like, oh, but, you know, uh, Queen Mary was built 20 years later or 24 years later, so there would have been adva advancements. And I'm like, yeah, but how, you know, how big of an advancement? Because really, steel quality today is loads better because, you know, we discovered certain mixtures. But but uh, anyway, the, the point is, I don't think there was any steel quality differences between Queen Mary and Titanic um, let me just kind of stop here to, um, I can zoom out one and that will, there we go. Um, but when it comes to the materials of the insides of the ship, yeah, Queen Mary had way more rare woods and displayed a lot more of those rare woods than Titanic did. You know, um, when you look at, uh, well, well, that was too far. When you look at uh, this game, for instance, oh, the corridor isn't here. It was on the level below us, but, well, I guess I can make a quick, a quick point out of it. So when you look at this corridor here, it's all white, right? And this is a, a common theme throughout Titanic is white painted walls, which was kind of the style of the time, but it also kind of permitted the builders to spend less money because the wood paneling did not have to be made of rare or exotic woods. It could be a really cheap wood that they painted right over. And so that's one of the things that uh, kind of was going for Titanic. I don't believe even these wall panels were rare. They might even just be like a, I don't know, something pretty widely available, maybe some kind of pine or something. Um, but uh, with Queen Mary, there there was rare woods all over the place, even down the corridors and everything, which is one of the things I admire about the Queen Mary. And, um, <clears throat> you know, and then, uh, you know, Titanic had linoleum floors, but Queen Mary had a... a majority of corkoid and stuff like that so some you know even then it was some pretty interesting materials that you don't really see a lot um, okay I was gonna take us to the lounge so yeah it's actually kind of funny because there's a lot of uh, Titanic purists that are like oh you know Titanic was more luxurious than Queen Mary and it's like well when you really like tally it up Queen Mary was more luxurious than Titanic especially when it comes to the the types of materials used aboard the ship. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. Oh, Daily Dose of Sunshine says the barbershop on Titanic doubled as a store you could buy toys, snacks, etc. Oh, okay, that I didn't know. Okay, that's pretty cool. Hello, Kevin. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, Mike is right. There is nothing wrong with titanic steel. There, there is this huge rumor that there was inferior steel, which is what led to the ship breaking up. No, what led to the ship breaking up was that the ship was not designed to, you know, be pulled halfway out of water the way it was. You know, uh, for instance, uh, when a lot of these ships, including the Queen Mary, was being launched from uh, the um, the slipway at the builders, quite often they did not cut the holes yet for most of the portholes and port lights. They they would leave that area of steel in until after the ship was already in the water. And the reason why was because with these huge ships, they worried that um, having less steel, you know, it, it would, um, as it went into the water, because half of it was on land, half of it was in water, it would bend the ship and distort it. And so um, they would leave the portholes uncut and then they would wait until it was already fully in water and then moved to the fitting out basin before they cut the rest of the the holes and port lights so um that's an example of of already knowing the physics of what would happen to a ship if it were halfway out of water so it it it's not it had nothing to do with like inferior steel at all it's just ships were not designed to stick out of water like that so, yeah, a lot of people also don't know that there were um, two of these grand staircases. This is the aft grand staircase, and it only goes, I think, maybe three different decks, uh, whereas the forward grand staircase uh, was slightly larger and also went down much further. This one only goes down to C deck, but the uh, forward grand staircase goes down to... Um, e deck, technically F deck, because it extends even further down towards the the uh, uh, Turkish baths. So this is the first class um, smoking room, a really beautiful room on the ship. <clears throat> Sorry, I have some tea here. My bucket of tea. <laughs> I'm having English breakfast tea, and I also have my own little homemade Scottish shortbread to go with it. Blue Ribbon, I thought, uh, well, I mean, Steve, I thought uh, the scene with Rose talking to Bruce Ismay was the... Uh, the veranda restaurant, which is this one here. Because in the movie, they were sitting about here. And when you would see Bruce Ismay sitting right about where this table is, you could see behind him the stewards opening those sliding doors. So, yeah, this is the veranda, everybody. And what's, what's really interesting, a, a, lo a lot about um, Titanic, and even parts of the Queen Mary itself, uh, is the exposed light bulbs. So uh, it's actually kind of funny, because today you'd be like, exposed light bulbs? Like, that's so weird, that, you know? But, um, but back then, light was still kind of like this miracle technology. Uh, people loved it, you know? Um, and so they were displaying these light bulbs. It was just part of, you know, it's kind of like what we do today with those Edison bulbs that are, you know, in coffee shops and stuff like that. It's it's all for, for show and display. And for the longest time, we didn't display bare light bulbs like that because, it you know, the magic of electric light wore off. But even on Queen Mary, there the corridors, the, the stateroom corridors, you go down them and there were these bare tubular incandescent bulbs they were tubular and they were incandescent not fluorescent <laughs> um and and that those were just bare on the corners uh of the uh of the walls and i personally don't like the way that that looked uh but you know what are you gonna do it's not like i'm gonna go back in time and complain to cunard so here's a little galley for, uh, well, it's a pantry and galley, for the smoking room and for 
the veranda and the palm court. So the palm court is the identical room to the veranda. And I heard the palm court was used as kind of like a children's nursery whenever it wasn't being used for other things. So, pretty interesting. But yeah, there's the pantry. Go in here, and here's more pantry-related stuff. Little tea sets and whatnot. And then you got these windows for, uh, you know, putting the snacks out. Ron says, Earl Grey tea, please. I love Earl Grey. It's my favorite black tea. But I have to have it uh, in um, mo with moderation because if I drink too much of it, you know, I might get I might get tired of it. <laughs> so I try to drink other teas in between it so I don't get tired of it. Um, all right, why don't we walk out here, actually? I'm trying to be as smooth with the camera work as possible so I don't make anybody sick. Of course, my refrigerator starts up. Um, Ella says, I would definitely love to join you all for coffee in that beautiful space. Oh yeah, it would be wonderful. Can you imagine? I would, you know, I, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to eventually when I take my trip to the to the UK aboard the Queen Mary 2 is having afternoon tea with my friend and stuff like that. You know, it's just going to be so, it's going to be so surreal to think, you know, like this is exactly what it was like, you know, to cross the ocean on an ocean liner. Well, except the Queen Mary 2 has a lot of modern amenities, but you get the idea. Mike says, lots and lots of oak on the Olympic-class ships. Oh, yeah, I bet. And oak was was a, a very prized material, so I guess I shouldn't say that oak wasn't necessarily... A, it, I mean, it's it's not a, it wasn't a rare wood, and even to this day, oak isn't necessarily a rare wood. But it was very common, but still a much uh, uh, enjoyed building material, so um, just as it is today. You know what? This is the first time I've ever noticed that the promenade deck kind of squishes inward. When you look at models of Titanic, like even the one behind me, uh, as soon as the ship, as soon as a part of the ship reaches the superstructure, it becomes like a square. At least that's what it looked like. But I'm looking at this now, and it's actually going in a little bit towards the bow of the ship. And that's something I never noticed before. It makes sense, uh, but uh, I honestly thought it was a perfect rectangular prism uh, from one end of the superstructure to the other. So that is new to me. So now we reached the front of the promenade deck, or the forward part of the promenade deck, I should say. Right above us is the bridge. Pretty cool. The forward well deck in front. <clears throat> Carl says that all the... Uh, all, yeah, all the wood on Titanic that you say might be some kind of pine or something was just plain American white oak. You're right. Thank you for the answer. <laughs> Plain American white oak. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, another thing I was pretty surprised about was, you see, I thought all ocean liners had teak wood decks like we see here. But uh, I found out that on Titanic, the majority of it was pine. Uh, pitch, pitch pine, I think they called it. Um which definitely was surprising to me. I, I had no idea 
I thought that like teak wood was just used widely because it, it just lasted better in the elements. But yeah, apparently a lot of it was teak wood pine. And so that actually kind of made me appreciate Queen Mary's uh, teak wood decks even more because even back then, teak was a very rare <laughs> Uh, an exotic type of wood, very expensive to use, and yet it was used all over the Queen Mary's decks. It was just amazing. Even on the railings were teak. So, yeah. So where should we go, people? Um, I feel like I'm just kind of wandering around on my own, but I don't really know what you guys want to see, where you want to go. Uh, hello, Willem. Ella says, now imagine that beautiful staircase being green like they did to poor Olympic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Olympic's green staircase. I don't like that that green color. You know? Um, I don't know. I was about to go off on a tangent about something with the Queen Mary, but I wasn't sure anybody wanted to hear it. <laughs> um... Uh, AppJet asks, I'm looking to download this, but when I download it, it downloads to my main de main disk, but, but that doesn't have enough space. How do I let it download on another disk? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not very good with computers at all. So I, I usually have all my friends help me with stuff because I don't know. But maybe somebody here who knows computers could could tell you how to make something directly download to another disk. Let's go to second class. Oh, Doc. Doc just said, Alex just wanted to stop by to support the channel. Time to head out, though. Kid-free night, and I get to socialize. Hope you have an awesome weekend. You too. So we are uh, in second class right now. And there's kind of an interesting thing, which is that... Um, so, okay, we're on a second class part of the aft decks of Titanic. The level directly above us is first class. So that's where we exited out of the veranda and kind of walked around the promenade deck. But then the level above that is second class again, because uh, that's where they would be able to walk around the boat deck and just kind of have a, a free space to, to get some air and some sunshine. Well, the, f the funny thing about it is, is that usually on a lot of ships, uh, the the top decks are are um, you know reserved only for first class, but on Titanic there's a, just a part of it where second class is above first class, and looking down upon them, <laughs> so <laughs> pretty pretty funny. Let's see, William Willem says also I watched Titanic at the age of ten. It's 4K 3D master. My mother said. I watch it now or never. <laughs> of 
Carl says, when we talk about Titanic, the name Thomas Andrews runs synonymous with it. Who do you think was the Thomas Andrews of Queen Mary, whether it be her principal designer or even Sir Bates? Um, you know, that is an interesting question. I never considered that because, yeah, we, we do all know who Thomas Andrews was and his role he played, you know, on Titanic and, and what he did for the ship. Um, but what about the Queen Mary? Who was the chief designer for Queen Mary? I don't know, actually. I really don't know. Um, and I'm not even sure if he would have been a household name amongst even Queen Mary fans, because if he was, then why haven't I heard of him? So that is an interesting question. But, uh, yeah, Sir Percy Bates was the, um, head of Cunard, one of the one of the lead chairman of the board. I'm pretty sure he was kind of like a CEO. Um, but yeah, uh, he was the one that spearheaded, you know, the construction of the Queen Mary and, you know, advocated for it and all that. So, yeah. But Sir Percy Bates was kind of like, if you will, the Bruce Ismay <laughs> of the Queen Mary as opposed to the Thomas Andrews. Here's a um, second class lift. They only had one for second class. There's a little um, thing for, for uh, operating the lift. Oh, here's a little map. Here we go. They do give this map to you when you download the game. Um, but, and, but as you walk through the game, you can kind of see this map and kind of get an idea of what's available to you. The stuff that's in like the dark pink, the hot pink color is, um, is, uh, the stuff that you can walk around and see, and the stuff in the lighter pink, the lighter hue color, is what you can see from a distance, uh, but not necessarily walk around there. So the thing is, I'm not well versed enough in Titanic to kind of like automatically recognize where everything is. If I, if I took enough time and stared at it, I could tell you what everything is here, but I mean, it would take a while, but, uh, okay, so that is CDAC, and I did that, I did that, yeah, I don't know, um, Urban says, it's interesting that those side rail panels were removable on the well deck. Yeah, um, is there a well deck nearby that I could show people? I think there is. Yeah, I think that opens up to the well deck. Willem says, does the game have a sinking mode? No, because this isn't necessarily a game, it's just a demo. So what uh, Steve was talking about, Blue Ribbon Productions, uh, is that you have this well deck with this side railing, but you can kind of see that there's these cutouts, and that's to allow uh, the removing of these panels here. So that way they could put, like, uh, uh, what do they call them, um, gangways and stuff like that to load stuff. It is a pretty interesting feature. I don't think it's unique to Titanic, but... Uh, it's certainly not one you you would see in the later years of ocean liners. So, pretty neat. And then there's even this thing here, which I can only assume is for ropes and mooring lines, but I don't even know. It's got too many sharp edges for ropes and mooring lines. <clears throat> but then there's another one over there. So, yeah, I don't know. See, this would be for a rope. There we go. See how like smooth edged that is? Well, I mean, you know, it is a game, so there's some some straight edges on there, but it, it looks like it's supposed to be smooth. That's for ropes. 
And look, there's another one of those, like, I think somebody did confirm they are like, like water fountains, you know. I didn't expect to see one outside. That's interesting. But this is the well deck. So well decks were designed to, to um, help disperse the movement of a wave if it came over the forward part of a ship or the stern of a ship. We're on the aft section of the ship, so this would be the stern. And if a wave came up over the edge of the stern, it would kind of drop down onto this well deck and uh, the, it wouldn't necessarily lose momentum, but it would certainly stir it up and prevent all that water from just jumping up and destroying the aft section of the of the superstructure. So it kind of gets deflected and moved away from the ship. Um, but yeah. Here's a cargo hatch. <clears throat> Steve says, what about the second class dining room? Okay, we can do that. There are some cargo holds, Ron, so we can go see that. OC Aviation says, can you go to the bridge? Um, Mike says, have you ever wondered why on the aft mast, a white pole on the bottom of it, it was for a canvas tent on the rain on rainy days? Oh, I know the white pole you're talking about. Oh, is that what that was for? Is for a, a little canvas, um, little canvas tent thing? I didn't know. Okay, so let's go back into the second class, and we'll see the um, the second class dining room is what Steve wanted to see. So here we are. Steve, it's so interesting to think that, you know, th this is a second class uh, sheltered promenade on the aft section of the ship, and Queen Mary had one just like it. It's so weird to think, like, how similar the two ships really were. Um, okay, so we have to go down another level. So this is D deck where the um, the second class dining room was. So there we go. All the um, chairs in this room are fixed to the floor, but they the chairs do swivel. So when you needed to sit down, you would just swivel the chair and be seated. Well, actually, I think a, a steward might actually help the ladies be seated, or the men would help, um, or the, you know, the gentlemen. Uh, but they would swivel it, sit down, and swivel back in. Um, it, it was a, you know, the only way to really get into the chairs. Uh, but as you would see later on with uh, newer ocean liners, they would just do away with these kinds of seats altogether because they just weren't comfortable. Let me go to this side. Um, OC Aviation says, Alex, did you explore third class? I did, but I can explore more of it for you guys if you want. Because um, this live stream is really for you guys. I can play this game whenever I have time, but I know a lot of people either can't or, you know, don't want to or for whatever reason. So this is a live stream for you guys. Okay, so... Um, we are closest to third class, I think. So we'll just go to third class. This is the second class purser's office. So these are the windows and everything to talk to them. 
And then some second class corridors where there's some rooms. State rooms, cabins, whatever you want to call them. But you see how, like, just white, like, on one side there's just wood panels with white paint. Then the ceiling is bare steel with, you know, bare steel uh, uh, framing and rivets on the plates. And then the wall here is bare steel. You know, so some people, they, you know, they're, they're kind of like, oh, you know, like, I was just talking to somebody the other day and, and they were like, oh, Titanic was way more luxurious than the Cunard ships like Mauritania or Lusitania. I'm like, I don't know, because from what I can tell, at least Mauritania and Lusitania were like wall to wall decorated. But you go through Titanic and you get this in the middle of second class even. And there's some of this in first class too, especially in the cabins. So I'm kind of like, I don't know, at least Mauritania and Lusitania were well decorated. You know, they're fitted out wall to wall. But the beauty of Titanic is only where it's at, as I like to say. So, um, down this way, what is down this way? Oh, I know what's down this way. There's nothing down here. Just more cabins. Or, oh, I was wrong. Well, no, I mean, I was right, but this isn't the landing I thought it was. I don't know if I've even been inside one of the second class cabins. They might have one example available, which is something that Queen Mary should have for for visitors. They should have like a recreated second and a recreated third class cabin for their tours. Heck, even a recreated first class cabin. Um, you know, just at least one example of each at the very least. Yeah, I know some people are like, oh, Queen Mary needs to have, you know, all her third class cabins put back in. I'm like, no, that's not necessary. It's just too expensive and you don't get really anything out of it. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice if like one of the sections of third class cabin stateroom areas was restored, at least aesthetically, if not, you know, fully fitted out. You know, like it could be just like this where there's just corridors and doors that lead to rooms and the rooms are closed. And then maybe you have one room that's actually fitted out like a third class cabin on the Queen Mary. You see, that would be really cool for the Queen Mary to do. But uh, I don't see that happening unless somebody who's very charismatic and knows how to help the ship can actually get it done. Okay, so let's go to the third class, which I believe we have to go up to this level and then through this door. Yep, there we go. I gotta remember to drink my tea, it's gonna get cold. <clears throat> Carl says, speaking of classes, it's uh, interesting to think how many people would have... Uh, Sneaked over the barriers and skip up a class. Um, well, uh, once again, using Queen Mary as an example, they would have had stewards at each of the barrier points. So um, the stewards would have been standing there and making sure that nobody from third class was, you know, going into a, a second or third class area. I can't necessarily speak for Titanic, but... Well, well, we'll go over here later. We're going to stick to third class for now. There is a third class cabin here somewhere. It's kind of hidden amongst everything. Watertight door. I don't think the open cabin is here somewhere. I think it's further aft. Um... Hello, Historic Travels. Good to see you. I was so confused when I checked this out because the audio wasn't working. Used your video to see that it wasn't included in the demo. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the music that they talked about. Um, yeah, they they decided to leave the music for the final version of the of this demo, which would be Project 401. And I was a, a little bit bummed by that because, you know, it would be nice to roam the Titanic with that music. Because you, like, you, that music, you guys, is the music that they, that they scored for this game or this demo or whatever you want to call it is so beautiful. And it really works. It works for this demo. It, it's, it's almost like music you would expect to hear in the movie Titanic, but it's not quite in there. So, um, yeah. But I'm looking forward to Project 401 because Project 401, you guys, in case you don't know, is pretty much this. It's this 50% of the ship like I'm exploring right now, except you get the music, you get um, uh, the ability to kind of learn more about the Titanic, you know, you, you can, uh, well, I mean, I don't want to assume too much, but, but what they did tell me is that you have photographs of the Titanic that you can learn from, and then you can also listen to, um, to people's, uh, uh, testimony of being on the Titanic, uh, and things like that. So it'll be really cool. It'll be a great little game to have before they come out with the official big game that does the sinking and all that. So here's a little pantry for the stewards of third class to be able to serve their passengers. Pretty cool. I'm, I'm very sure a cabin is here somewhere. Pretty sure it's right over here. Yep, I was right. So here is a third class cabin on Titanic. It's got, uh, you know, bare steel upper areas. I'm pretty sure that that might be like for stowing some, some of your uh, belongings up there, maybe small bags or something. Um, but yeah, you get uh, this little sink here with this, um, this is kind of like porcelain, and it, it, the thing that holds the cups and the bottle, that comes off like a lid, and the stewards can pour in fresh water, and you just use like a little valve to operate the, the uh, faucet, or the tap as they call it in, in the UK, the tap. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what it's for. So, um, pretty cool, at least you, so you can wash up, because nobody had their own toilets, you had to share. So, here's some bunks. Now, on Queen Mary, third-class cabins were very similar to this, but larger. Um, and they usually had enough room for a small chair and just overall just slightly bigger space. Not by much, but slightly bigger. Um, yeah, pretty neat. All right, so that's the only example of a third-class cabin we have on this game for now. But we can go up a level. Just like to make sure that I didn't skip anything. There is a doorway that leads somewhere here. Is it this one? No, maybe I'm just going crazy. Yeah, it's not that one. Okay, never mind. I'm going crazy. Um, okay, so we can go up a level. Willem says, can you play Britannic Patroness of the Med Mediterranean? I don't want to. I didn't download that game. I just don't want to. All right, so we got some firefighting equipment. These are more third-class cabins, but as you can see, we're blocked by these uh, these uh, trunks. And if we go up another level, we end up at the level of the well deck, but behind us, kind of sneaked in against this uh, staircase, is the third-class lounge and the third class smoking room. So 
the lounge is pretty interesting. It's just uh, just places to sit and hang out. There's a piano for playing music. Well, obviously, what else do you do with a piano? Unless you're a cartoon, you drop pianos on people, so they're used as a weapon. But other than that, uh, yeah. And then the other room is almost identical. And it is the smoking room. Let me just check this real quick. Yeah, they're the same size. For some reason, I was doubting myself the other day going, no, they're two different sizes. But no, they're the same size. And this one is is paneled in a... Uh, this one, like, well, the paneling on this one is not painted over. So um, it kind of looks a bit more masculine in that way. And that's how a lot of smoking rooms were back then. They had darker color schemes to make them appear more masculine. A little detail I like about this room is uh, the designers of this demo uh, made this room appear smoky when you walk through it. So I, I like that. You got the little spittoons there. Pretty neat. All right. Shall we go to the bridge is what I'm wondering. Steve says the drinking fountains were to wash the salty taste that would be left on your lips from the sea spray. Is that true? That sounds like like you're trying to pull my leg. Steve says the best feature of the Olympic class ships is the fact that the second class was not a separate superstructure from first class like the Mauritania and such. That is true. Mauritania and Lusitania had a separate superstructure just for second class. Oh geez, that flag always scares me. I think that I when I when I look at the corner of my eye, it looks like there's someone on the well that on the 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 docking bridge, uh, just kind of like standing there, <laughs> but moving like maybe swaying or something. Jeez, that always freaks me out. But yeah, here we go. And I still have not received an answer from anybody as to why the flagpole, on. Titanic has a hinge at the bottom. Like, why? It's not for changing out the flag, because that's what the rope is for. You pull the flag down with the rope, and then, you know, what is it for? Why is there... And what is that? Why is there a random thing here? What is that for? Carl says, where is Rose's cabin? <clears throat> Rose's cabin is technically B-52, 54, and 56. Um, but uh, they used elements of other cabins and stuff to uh, in the movie. To, they kind of combined it to make it look, uh, I don't know, just larger, I guess. So let us go up. <clears throat> Mike says her room is the Strauss stateroom. That's true. It is the Strauss stateroom, but it's also uh, it's also a stateroom from the deck below. So it's it's kind of weird. They combined multiple staterooms to make hers. Like it, it's weird. Uh, Maybe I'll just show you guys. I'll show you what I'm talking about.
Yeah, Steve says the cabin's B-52, 54, 56 was actually unoccupied suite originally reserved for J.P. Morgan. Yep. Tarkus says, is the wine cellar open in this? Uh, I haven't seen it, so I'm going to say no. Okay, so what deck are we on? We're on B deck. We got to go down a level. Well, actually, no. There is a an area here. So I'll show you kind of like some weird thing about Rose's cabin, which is that it looks a lot like... Let's see. Hold on. I just... I need to get to the right. Okay, so this is B51. So let's see. B50... Should be on the other side then, right? Yeah, this is... B-54, B-52, okay. So B-52, uh, it, okay. So the weird thing about it is with B-52, you do have the private promenade. If you guys remember this, this is where Rose was sitting like way over there and Cal was sitting there and he told her like, you can't, you know, run off again. And so he like throws the table over cause you know, he's crazy. Um, so this is where that scene took place, which makes sense because if their cabins were B-52, 54, and 56, they would have access to this area. This would be their area. But um, then you find interiors to cabins. Is it this one? Well, not this one specifically. I think there was a red cabin. Then you have an interior like this that is shown. Although the arrangement looks a bit different, but technically Rose would have been like sitting here looking at a mirror. And there would have been a bed right next to her, but it would have looked like this. So that kind of bed. I don't know if you guys remember that. She was sitting at a mirror and uh, Cal pulled up next to her, and that's when he showed her the diamond for the first time. So there was a cabin like that. I don't know if B-52, 54, and 56 have cabins like this, but uh, that's kind of what it would have been like. I doubt it only because there is no private promenade on this side uh, in, this, in this set of rooms. So I don't know what... But then, okay, so let me show you the Strauss suite to kind of round it off and show you what is so different? We're on B decks. So we gotta go below. So, the scene where Jack draws Rose was kind of technically done in this cabin, which is on the deck below. And this cabin was unique on the ship. There weren't any others like it. But you recognize the style. And this is C55. So that's where that took place. Uh, there was a brief moment in the movie when you saw this cabin, but it was only because Jack was going towards this door to put the drawings in the safe, which was on that, uh, that uh, dresser right there. So you only saw this room briefly, and I think it was like from the view of this doorway. And I think the doorway to the toilet and the bathroom were shut. Oh, and I do have to correct something I said. So I had previously said in other live streams that you shared this uh, this toilet and bathroom uh, with the cabin next door, and that wasn't necessarily true. You had to rent this space out. You could reserve it, and um, but technically there is an access to the to the stateroom next door in case they are the ones that reserve this area so you could you could possibly have these you know this suite here and not have a toilet of your own you'd have to use one of the ones that are provided down the corridors so that is the thing about rose's cabin is that it uses three different areas of the ship <laughs> to make up the bulk of her cabin it's just so weird 
All right, so. Chilling the Frozen North says, Hi, Alex, do you know how many decks above the waterline is your current location? Well, I know the waterline is like at the foot of E deck, and if I'm on C deck, then I'm technically two decks above the waterline. But I mean, yeah, that's a bit of a strange way to measure it. Um, sorry, I'm just reading comments to make sure I get everything. Okay, I, I see what Mike is saying to Steve about the cabins and stuff. Okay. Chilling says, where did third class passengers, uh, male passengers obtain hot water for shaving? Um, you could ask your steward, you can ask your cabin steward to um, to deliver you hot water. And all you do is, well, the, the steward would do it for you, but he would empty out your hot water bin, the, the porcelain piece I was showing you above, and it would drain out into the drain, and then he would fill it with the hot water, uh, and then you would use that hot water for shaving. And there was a little drain plug, so you could plug up the drain and use that as your little shaving basin, you know. So that's what they did, but I think also there probably would have been a way for a barber to shave you. I don't know if Titanic had a specific barbershop for third class or if they just went to like a general area or room uh, to which you would, um, the barber would just show up and, you know, and shave you. I don't know about that, but I do know that you could ask your steward for hot water and they would deliver that into the little the little basin that you use to fill your sink. Yeah, it's hard to believe, but yeah, even third class, they had cabin stewards, people who would come to their cabin to give them things that they need. If they wanted a cup of tea or something, then the steward could do that. It's, 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 I think there's a, a belief that uh, the people in third class were you know, even though Titanic had the best third class, or so they say, um, in 1912, I say so they say because I really do think Mauritania and Lusitania could give Titanic a run for its money when it comes to third class, but uh, there is this belief that, you know, third class was steerage, and it, it really wasn't. Steerage was like the fourth class, um, and Titanic did not have steerage. They had third class, and steerage, I you know, you, it, you'd be more inclined to believe that in steerage you didn't get a cabin steward you were just pretty much on your own whoa what is going on frame rate drop oh that is so weird this has never happened before okay i'm getting out of this room There we go. That was weird. I know some people were complaining about that going into that room and it was like all all glitchy, but they complained about that before the this version of the game came out. So I was like, "Oh, well, I don't have that problem." But now that I'm playing the release version, that is really weird. I've never had that issue before. All right. Well, we're going to avoid that room. <laughs> Uh, I was going to take you guys to see the um, the bridge, so we'll go there. Dave says, did they stow life jackets underneath the bed? I don't know for certain. There might have been closets along the corridors where life jackets were stowed. 
I think that underneath the bed would have been used for like your your bags and stuff like that. I don't think there would have been room cuz you did need room for the various uh things you were traveling with. This is the uh the famous clock. The one that Jack would always wait at for Rose. You also notice something different which is that uh, the staircase is much narrower and smaller than you would think it is. There really isn't room for two modern people to stand side by side right here at this top step. Um, I don't even think there was room for people back then to stand side by side right here. Uh, and honestly, when going upstairs and stuff on an ocean liner that is rolling in, at sea, you know, you want to have as close to access to uh, railings as possible. If you're walking up along this, you know, all of a sudden you got to jump over here to get to this railing so you don't uh, fall. So yeah. Okay, so the the uh, helm and the bridge is through this doorway. Hello, Moonzer. Oh, Steve's... So I think if, if I'm getting this right, Steve was answering my question about why the aft mast on the ship the f the furthest most mast all the way at the end uh the reason why it has a hinge was to easily change out the rope line when it would become frayed the the rope line that held the that held the the flag and so you would just swing the mast inward towards the towards the you know the stern and then you could easily access it and change it out i'm guessing so Okay, well, that there we go. I finally have an answer to that, because I was never able to get an answer to it before. See, I thought... I thought it doubled as sort of like a... I don't know, like, like, a, like a spare crane for, like, hoisting the, uh, <laughs> the spare anchor or something. Because the spare anchor is smaller than the... The regular anchors so I don't know I was kind of like I don't know maybe it's like to swing the spare anchor over I don't know but okay so we are in the wheelhouse of the bridge this is where you were most likely to spot the helmsman standing right here to operate the telemotor helm these are the telephones that connect to the various areas of the ship necessary to communicate. You have all these ropes and lanterns for, I'm guessing, a power outage. Pretty cool. And if we go out here to the bridge, this is where they would stand for, you know, docking in rough weather or whatever just to make sure that uh, the ship gets lined up correctly you know steve there's a lot less instruments in here than you would expect <laughs> you know when you think about like the instruments on queen mary they had all these instruments all over the walls but with titanic it was just so simple kind of Maybe it, maybe it made it more complicated to have less. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and that, I think that tells you how far the ship is, uh, is listing to one side, like when it rolls. Interesting. Notice it doesn't go past 40. Helm indicator, oversheds patent. Adjust midships under this cap. Actually, I don't know. No, yeah, that does make sense. It, it would be. But interesting that it stops at 40.
Okay, so these are the bridge wings, which don't jut out very far. I always say this, I guess, whenever I come to these bridge wings, but I'm like, you know, you would expect bridge wings to stick out farther so that, you know, when you look back this way, uh, you would be able to see past the lifeboats, but you can't. You'd have to lean all the way out this window to do that. You know, if you're coming into like a really tight area, like maybe the ship is needed to go through a port with a lot of rocks or something, you'd want to make sure that the aft end of the ship is not swinging towards the rocks. So you'd want to like lean out and and see. But uh, hard to do that. Um, there's the funnels. Moonzer says that the random circle thing on the floor that I saw on the poop deck was possibly like a rope storage. Yeah, maybe. Emma says, are my messages showing up at all? I see that one. Oh yeah, I see I see why you're asking. Uh Emma, I don't read every single comment, otherwise we'd be here all day. I only read comments where someone asks me questions. Like I, I don't what well, I guess I should specify. I don't read comments aloud, like all of them aloud. I read them in my head, um, but I don't read all of them out loud because we'd be here all day if I tried to do that. So I only answer comments where there's a question or someone is answering one of my questions. Um but uh but yeah, otherwise I read the others silently in my head. But um, yeah. Moonzer says, why did they not build a grand staircase on the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth? That's weird that you would ask that because Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth both had, you know, first class each had three grand staircases. So, um, yeah, that is it, it, that is odd that you ask that, um, because Queen Mary had a forward grand staircase, uh, and a mid grand staircase, the one that everybody uses, and then it had an aft grand staircase. That was all just for first class. Then second class had two staircases. Only one of them I would really consider to be grand, but technically they were grand because they were very well decorated, um, you know. And then, and then they had uh, the third class had a single grand staircase uh it wasn't necessarily decorated like the others would be but it is very large and it stretched down through like five different decks so yeah yeah queen mary had a grand staircase for every single class it's just not the same exact style that titanic had and i think that's why a lot of people wonder they 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 think a grand staircase has to have like a really big landing, you know, with a big open atrium. And they didn't always, like grand staircases didn't always have that. A grand staircase is a main staircase, highly decorated and designed to impress. And the three uh, first class grand staircases on Queen Mary certainly did impress when you look at them.
Emma says, love your videos, Alex. I was here before. You probably remember me. Just very busy these days. Oh, thank you very much. So, Willem, with the game, you have to remove uh, the game from the... Um, from the compressed zipped folder. And then once you remove the files out of that, um, you can then open the file and then you'll see, uh, it'll say something like, I think like your name. And then you click that. And then you'll see the little demo 401 logo thing. And that's the game. So this is the first class area of the boat deck. On Titanic, the boat deck was divided into several areas. It was divided into the officer's area, forward of that, um, that railing there. Then you had first class. And then you had a, a section for the engineers, the stokers engineers, to come out and get fresh air. And then beyond that was second class. Pretty cool. Geez, those funnels are really huge. And it's funny, I've had people that look at the Queen Mary and they go, oh, the Queen Mary is so ugly, it had so many of those ventilators and blah, blah, blah. You know, and they're like, you know, Titanic didn't have those. And I'm like, really? Because when you look at Titanic, there they are. Here are the giant cowl vents and stuff. Titanic had arguably even more than Queen Mary did. And then you have the giant uh, vents for the boiler rooms. You know, they're all over. They're just arranged differently so that it just doesn't appear so prominent but yeah I've had people literally tell me that Titanic did not have these and I'm like it really did it had a lot of them <laughs> they were all over the top areas of the ship so this is the compass platform during a storm or something this would be one of the most stable areas on the ship to read a compass. Um. And it says, when will this release? Anyone here in the chat know? This is already released. You can already play this. This is for free. And the link is in the description below. Shilling in the Frozen North says, is the idea behind this game to explore the ship? Yes, because um, because it, this is made for Titanic fans. It's made for people who specifically love Titanic and have always wanted to explore it themselves and see it with their own eyes. So that's exactly what this game is for. And keep in mind, though, this is a demo of the games that are to come. So the next version of this will be Project 401, which would be like this but more like a virtual museum and then uh then you have the titanic honor and glory which will be an actual game um, with a lot more detail and a lot more interactivity with the environment as well as eventually they will put a sinking mode into the finalized game uh they have a and uh, they have ideas for how they want to go about the sinking mode and stuff like that but uh, yeah, that's essentially what it is. It's really more of a simulator than a game, really. But people call it a game because it's just easier to say. You say simulator and people are like, well, how do you simulate the Titanic? <laughs> so um, Nikki says, update to the latest NVIDIA driver for that dining saloon. I, I did. I updated two days ago. Uh, let's see. Hmm. 
Windsor says, who was Lady Painted in that picture? But that was, he asked that question a long time ago, so I have no idea what he's asking now. Um, Ella says, are there any crew quarters we could visit or maybe the captain's cabin? So there's no captain's cabin, but there are crew quarters we can visit. So why don't I go ahead and take everybody there? There's actually a faster way to get there, I think. Let's see. I think it's in, I have to go to the second class area. It's the dog kennel. There we go. This might make you guys incredibly <laughs> motion sick to go down these spiral staircases, but be prepared because there's going to be a lot more spiral staircases to come. <laughs> Can't go through this door. So here is a linen closet for the cabin stewards. And then ventilator or heater could be it it could double as a heater some um, bed sheets find ourselves back in first class Emma says, you, Alex, and Historic Travels plus Ocean Liner Designs are fantastic resources on this topic. Oh, I would not consider myself a resource on Titanic. Not by far. Um, historic Travels and Ocean Liner Designs are much, much more uh, knowledgeable about Titanic. Um, I know so very little I know a lot of people, every time I say that, everybody goes, oh, Alex, don't put yourself down. I'm not putting myself down. I purposely do not research the Titanic. So, <laughs> so it's, I'm not at all shaming myself for that. I'm just saying that, uh, that I am not the foremost expert on Titanic. Let's be honest, I don't think anybody would say that they were an expert, but you know, I would, I would say that historic travels and, and ocean liner design certainly know a bunch load more than I do. What was I going to take us to again? Oh, right. The, um, the, uh, uh and the, uh, the crew spaces. Okay. So to get to crew spaces, we have to go to the forward grand staircase and then head all the way down to E deck. This is D deck. Here we go. E deck. We 
go through Scotland Road. <clears throat> William says, Alex, can you make a 2023 tutorial on how to install Demo 401? No. My channel is, is about history, not how to install history on your computer. <laughs> oh, not the right one. Now that the door is closed, it's hard for me to remember which one goes to the boiler rooms. That's plumbers. I, I suppose I should read the signs. Okay, this is it. Oh, see, this one even ha doesn't even have a sign. Okay, so into the boiler room. He says, I saw a photo of, wait, I saw a photo of Olympic's wheelhouse in her later years has, was much different and had a lot more devices than her 1912 days. Yeah, I imagine as the years went by, they would have more, more devices. Um, Carl says, what are your thoughts on Titanic 2? I have not seen it. I don't I don't like to spend time watching something I know I'm not going to enjoy because I have a lot to do on a daily basis. So I only watch movies that I know I'm going to enjoy. Can you check the aft grand staircase? For what? Mike says, go to the engine room. That's a good idea, but we're already here in the boiler room and I was gonna take us to some of the um, crew areas. What time is it? 4.28, okay, I in half an hour, I have to make sure I'm off of the live stream. Um, but I'll show you an area, which is pretty cool. You can go through boiler rooms six and five, um, but you can't proceed beyond that. But you can stand here and crouch and look through all the boiler rooms going further aft. So that's pretty cool, just to let you guys know. And, uh, and yes, you can climb up inside of the... Um, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the, um, the coal bunkers. You can climb up inside the coal. See, there's the notorious coal fire that destroyed Titanic. <laughs> like seriously, like it's like a barbecue sized coal fire. And supposedly it destroyed the metal way up there. Come on. No, it didn't. No. Coal fire is a really terrible theory. It was a coal fire. It was put out several hours, or even I think more than a day before Titanic even struck the iceberg. It had nothing to do with the sinking at all. It did nothing. It's not even anywhere near in the spot where the, where the iceberg had struck the ship or where the ship even split in half. Nowhere near the same areas. So... But yeah, you can climb up inside the coal bunkers and you can like climb up and crawl up over the boiler rooms inside the coal bunkers and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I have a, a, the previous live stream I did of this game, I did that in that live stream. So now we're gonna go through the fireman's passage. Wait. 
I don't know which way. <laughs> I think you go this way. I don't know. Because one side is for going one direction. The other side is for going the other direction. But I don't remember which direction. Oh, okay. Now I know. This way up, this way down. So I should have gone on that side of the railing. Okay, anyway, so this is one of those areas where you can't avoid the spiral staircase, but to prevent myself from getting motion sick, I go up the spiral staircase like this. So someone wanted to see cargo holds, so why not just climb in? This is one of the cargo holds, don't ask me which one. <laughs> I don't know, um, but uh, ah, there we go. I was looking for the way in. It's kind of a maze. But when you continue on, you find the treasure at the end. Yay. Okay, back to where we were. And we go back up the spiral staircase. <clears throat> so here are some crew quarters. Oh, no label. This might be for some of the stokers, to be honest. Moonzer was talking about the stair, the grand staircase is similar to Titanic staircase with a dome. See, the thing is, uh, so Queen Mary did technically have something like that. It's just a different style. You know, you you can't expect every ocean liner to have exactly the same type of grand staircase, a big open atrium with a big dome and all that. Like that's you know, every every ocean liner had a different design. Uh, on Queen Mary. You, d you did have the top of the Grand Staircase. When you went on Promenade Deck to the, to the mid first class Grand Staircase, you had this big open area, um, beautifully decorated. The top of the staircase had the medallion of, of uh, Her Majesty Queen Mary, you know, and then you descended down the stairs from there. So, you know, the ship did have Grand Staircases. Um, but it's not going to look like Titanic's because not very many ships had grand staircases like that. I mean, you look at Mauritania or Aquitania, you know, they were from the same era. They didn't have staircases that looked like Titanic's. But, you know, then there's then there's ships like SS Rex uh, from the Italian line that had kind of a grand staircase with a big, you know, like one of those, what do you call it, landings that kind of uh, come down and, and branch out. You know, it, it's all just style it's just related to style you know it's like asking how come you know every house doesn't have like a uh what do they call that like a not a turret um like a lot of houses had like a tower you know in the old in the victorian era but then you know, like you know wondering why why not every house had one? It's like, it just depends on who was building it and what they wanted. But just because, you know, just because the, uh, the staircase on Queen Mary doesn't look like Titanic's doesn't mean it wasn't a grand staircase. Um, okay, so... This is another level. Ah, okay. There's more crew area up here. So more bunks. You can definitely tell the shear because the, you know, everything is pointing upwards towards the bow of the ship. 
You got the uh, the pipes for the chains, the anchor chains, and then you got the chain locker, which is right down there. I'm not gonna go in there. You guys can see that on my previous live stream. I explored a lot more of the ship in the previous live stream, and there was a, you know, I I did really well in the previous live stream with just kind of seeing more of the ship and stuff. And this doesn't, yeah, okay. Forward. And then we can go up these stairs here. So here is a uh, crewman's galley. So they, they make all the food and stuff for the uh, f the uh, firemen, the stokers, the all of them. They have a type of steam oven here. I'm pretty sure it's a steam pressure oven. And then uh, you know, kind of like a pressure cooker. You see, we have these things in kitchens today, uh, commercial kitchens. I, I don't remember what we call them anymore, but but uh, they have like double doors and they do all kinds of, they're like a miracle machine really because you can bake things in them, but you can also steam things in them and you can dry things out in them. It's like you can do all kinds of stuff with them. It's not like a normal oven. Um, and it's really cool. Uh, and a lot of kitchens have them. And so this is kind of like an earlier version of that in a way. Um, and then you have the, the classic ranges with the ovens. So there's like a loaf of bread in there. Could be a roast, actually. It's hard to tell. What is that? Did you guys just see that? Okay. <laughs> it looked like an orb. I was like, what in the world? There's another one. Okay, so it must be something like in the air. Okay, that was that was kind of weird. Kind of weirded me out. Then you have a potato peeler. You dump all the potatoes in here and they come out perfectly peeled. You have these machines for cooking soups. They're steam kettles, technically. Steam lines come down and supply it. Okay. So, if we go through here, this is the um, fireman and stoker's galley. So they just sit here, they get fed their food, their slop, and then they go out and break their backs working. This is... Uh, Kind of like a, I forget what they call this. It's, it's, it's it, I mean, on Queen Mary, it, it's called the capstan gear room, the forward gear space. But uh, on Titanic, I don't know what they call it. But this is the machinery that operates the anchor chains and the capstans of the forecastle deck, which is right above us. And then this down here will drop right on in. Oh, I guess we don't drop, we just kind of climb down. This is the forward storage, uh, dry storage area for, um, for the crew. So this is like where they would keep like potatoes and grains and things like that, you know, for making food for the firemen, stokers, and other um, crewmen. And as you can see, it goes down several levels. So, lots of storage space.
You have various openings for letting ropes in and out. They even have a one of the capstans in here for uh, for operating mooring lines and stuff as a backup. Otherwise, the rest of the capstans would be up there. And then last time I, I did a live stream, we discovered that this metal pole here is the base of the bow crane that operated uh, for the um, for the spare bow anchor. So that's the base of the bow crane. And then you have these are pipes for the anchor chains, and the anchors are right below us. And we go this way, and we're at the very bow of the ship peeking out the little hole for the rope. Some people look at models of Titanic and they see this hole on the bow and they think that that is for a headlamp. But ocean liners did not need headlamps. There's no point. Headlamps don't see far enough uh, for them to make any difference at, at nighttime. So um, so what this hole is actually for is, is for like a mooring line or for supporting the spare anchor on the bow. So we'll just go ahead and go over this way. Now all the all this machinery is operated using various little steam engines. So here's two of the steam engines that operate uh, not just the bow anchors, uh, but also the capstans. And then here's more. So here's another steam engine for another capstan. And then on the other side as well. Queen Mary, they were electric. So we're going to go back through here because if we go through here, there's nothing down there. I've been down there. The, there is a door that leads somewhere, but not anywhere we want to go at the moment. Um, and then uh, through this doorway here, you're at the base of the mast. And so you can go in. It's a little bit tricky to go in because sometimes... The game just doesn't want you to go inside, so... Sorry, there we go. And you can look up. And you can see all the way up to the level where the uh, where the lookout is. But uh, we can press F and go up there. Alright, so after this, you guys, we will go to the engine room before I have to end the live stream. Evan Scott, no, I have not seen Titanic 666. I try not to watch movies I know I'm not going to enjoy. Um, So Chilling the Frozen North asks if like Titanic had survived and been re-engined with turbines or diesels like the QE2 was, um, would Titanic have survived to a later career? Um, no, because there's a lot of factors that go into how long a ship lasts on the ocean, and one of the biggest factors is how popular a ship is. So, you know, if Titanic had, had not sank and even survived as long as Olympic did. Um, the problem with Olympic was it wasn't just about upgrading the Olympic uh, in terms of technology. It was also that her interiors were just really old by that point. By the 1930s, they were just old, and the ship was expensive to operate, and the rooms were not big enough. Nothing met the standard of the day, and so it was just too antiquated. And so you would literally have to redesign not just the the propulsion system of these ships, but you also would have had to completely just redesign all the interiors and stuff like that. And even then, the ship probably still would not earn enough money to keep going. I mean, one of the things people love about Titanic is the four funnels. Well, if you upgrade the ship in the 1930s to match all the technology and stuff, you're looking at getting rid of, like, two of the four funnels 
you know, the ship would just be extremely altered. I, I only mentioned the funnels, but the rest of the ship would be extremely altered to the point where you kind of wouldn't even recognize the ship, really. So it, it is kind of interesting that way, but yeah, there's there was just no way. These ships were way too antiquated, even for the 1930s, to have survived past that. Okay, so we will go to the engine rooms. Let's see if this door takes us there. Yeah, third class open space, that's close enough. Sorry, I'm just reading comments because I'm very far behind on comments. Dark Moon, um, the team at Titanic Honor and Glory have not gone um, too deep into the details about the sound of the ship. Um, but I'm sure they're thinking about all that stuff because, you know, they're very detailed guys. And they're also big Titanic fans, so I'm sure that they want certain things just like we do. Um, but no, they haven't spe specifically talked about sound design. Uh, Chilling in the Frozen North asks about why the Fireman's Passage asks instructs men to break step. I don't know, unfortunately. Uh... Dark Moon says, didn't know the spiral stairs in the bow were one were one way. Yeah, so the spiral stairs that we took to get up to the crew areas on the bow of the ship, the reason why th they are one way is because they're very, very tiny spiral staircases. You wouldn't want to try to be passing people up as they're going up and you're going down because one, there wouldn't be enough room, and two, it would slow you down um, because you could easily get down those stairs by just going clop, 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 clop all the way down. Um, but you'd have to slow down every time you needed to pass somebody. So one of the spiral staircases was dedicated to going down. The other was dedicated to going up. That way everybody saved time and, uh, and the headache of trying to get up and down the stairs. Dark Moon says, is that the cargo hold with the car? So the cargo hold we were just in, no, it wasn't the one with the car. Well, someone else says it was. I don't know. I'm not going to... I Let me tell you guys right here and now, I am not a Titanic expert. I do not research the Titanic. I don't know anything really about it. I can only answer based off of what little things I know. So if I say something incorrect, like that's not the cargo hold with the car, it's because to the best of my knowledge, it's not. But the best of my knowledge is pitiful at best. So, you know, I try to tell people, like, I'm not, I'm the wrong person to ask about Titanic stuff. I will always answer with the best of my Queen Mary knowledge, not Titanic knowledge. So, um,. We gotta go to the engine rooms. Darkman says, wish the decks were labeled. No idea which deck it's at. The decks are labeled. I'm just probably not pointing the camera at which decks are what, but they are labeled usually at the staircases.
Oh, Ella, thank you so much for joining. So this is the um, the main engine room, as so they call it. This is the reciprocating engine room. So this is where the two famous Titanic uh, quadruple cylinder triple expansion reciprocating engines were. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'll kind of take my time exploring it since this is everyone's favorite room. And this is probably the room that we we're going to end the stream at. So... Um, there are limitations to how much of the room you can explore. They put out these buckets and various other tools to prevent you from going too far in the room. But you can see the tops of the cylinder heads here. And then if we go to the other side, we can go a little bit further. So we can go to here, we can even look all the way up and see the um, the uh, 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 hatch, the engine room hatch, which allows fresh air to come in and allows hot air to escape the room. These old ocean liners, Titanic included, had issues with uh, with air ventilation. A lot of the rooms, a lot of the spaces on these ships would become somewhat stagnant with the air. It was kind of unpleasant. And, um, you know, so ships, they tried ever harder to come up with ventilation systems that allowed for... Uh, air to be well ventilated. It's too much. Um, let's see. Sorry, just reading comments to see if I can answer anything. But there's nothing, nobody's asking me any questions at the moment, so. Dave says the hole at the bow could be a tugboat line. Yes, it's anything related to towing or, you know, anything like that mooring towing mooring holding the um the spare anchor all of that that's what that hole at the very bow of the ship was for it's for all of the above but it just was not for uh, a headlight <laughs> on the ship yes the lighting on this on this uh game model is really fantastic. Just the amount of work that was put into it here. Dark Moon says it's the fourth funnel directly above the reciprocating engine room. I don't think so. I think the fourth funnel is actually above the turbine engine room.
which technically the turbine engine room is on the other side of that wall over there, bulkhead, the other side of that bulkhead over there. Um, so I guess, yeah, maybe, but, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I couldn't tell you without looking at a blueprint myself, so. Telecon, thank you so much. Uh, Steve says, interesting that the main reciprocating engines are turning, but outside the ship is at a dead stop. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is. So let's go down another level. And get sorry the um <clears throat> the aspect ratio of this thing gets all wonky whenever I mess with it so oh, no that looks too weird there we go <clears throat> Silly Biker says, this is, this is the gift of the technology, wait, this is the gift of the technology to be able to visit the ship in this way. It's so interesting. Yes, I absolutely agree. You know, if you had asked me as a kid that there would ever be like something like this where you could explore the Titanic so realistically, I would have said, no, that's not possible. You can, can never do that, you know, but, um, but now I look at it and I'm just like, wow, you know, just amazed. But it's funny, like, I have friends who are so used to playing simulations and games and stuff like that, and this doesn't astonish them at all. They're just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's fine. I'm like, I'm like, how does this not blow your mind to pieces? It's just like, you know, it's fantastic. Um, Sam Brown. That's awesome. I actually do. I, it, I I like looking at steam tractors. They're pretty interesting. Willem says, Alex, I'm back. Uh, when will the Jet T Tim in Central Africa time? Oh, when will the when will the tea time be? Uh, well, I don't I don't know what Central Africa time is. Um, off the top of my head, I'd have to like. Google it or something, and I'm in the middle of a live stream. But, um, but uh, I I can say that I'm thinking that uh, Sunday we'll do a tea time, um, and it will be at 3:30 p.m. Pacific time. So, yeah, and I'll repeat that for everybody. The next tea time will be Sunday, 3:30 p.m. Pacific time, and so then you can kind of, you know have tea with me and you can see the trains running and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, I don't know what that is in central Africa time because I'd have to Google it, but I'm using my computer for the game and I'm using my phone for reading everybody's comments. So, it's really cool to see these engines running. There's got to be another spot that I can stand. There we go. Right. We have, I have read through all the comments now, so I'm all the way at the bottom and I do have to get going because uh, I have stuff to do. But anyway, um, 
yeah, so this has been Titanic Honor and Glory, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. It's certainly a really fun game. And, you know, every, like, one, you know, once in a while, maybe once a month or so, uh, or maybe twice a month, I'll come back on here and we'll play the game again and we'll kind of explore the ship and see other places that we didn't see the previous time. So, uh, believe me, I've... I have explored this game for a solid week when I first got it and still didn't see everything. So there's a lot to see on this game. But um, anyway, folks, uh, yeah, I'm going to get going. And um, uh, yeah, I told you about tea time. Um, and then next week will be uh, my video about uh, the RMS Queen Elizabeth. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.